Good afternoon, friends. <laughs> Happy Saturday, everybody. It's paint day and I'm so excited to be here with everybody. And uh, we have 10 minutes to settle in here. So let's just chill out for a bit. I'm gonna get my computer all, make sure everything's all working and all the good stuff. Um, I'm really excited to paint this adorable Nomi leprechaun with you today. Um, let's just see where we're at here. Okay. So, um, if you have never met me before, my name's Julie and, uh, I love to paint and, uh, we're going to have a fantastic time today. And part of it is because this party is actually sponsored by the Fantastic Fathers Association. Um, and they are an amazing organization that um, that help moms and dads raise their kids together, even if they're not together as a couple, um, and they support them. And what a wonderful, just, I just love that so much, you know? We love our kids so much, and I think it's just so important that we're always there to, to support them no matter what. Um, and what a great idea to get the family together and get our kids and parents together and do fun projects like this because everybody wins. Everybody wins when we paint, so it's so good. Um, all right, let's see who's here. Uh, so just remember guys, just let me know where you're painting from and, uh, and say hi. <laughs> and let me know if you, uh, what? We have somebody here from none of it. Lana, that's amazing. Oh, and Teresa, cool. That's so awesome. Oh my goodness. I think you might be the furthest away. You win. <laughs> oh, and Nat's from Toronto and uh, cool. lana has got a whole crew here. Brit's in the house. You guys are so awesome. <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks, Jen. Great to see you. Awesome. We got uh, Giselle from Colorado and Patty's in the house. Yay. Thanks guys. Um, Anita and Christy. Hi. <laughs> and cool. We got some Comber residents in St. Charles and, uh, yeah, that is so honestly, who can say they're hanging out in Nunavut? Not very many people. You are a very small percentage today so that's pretty cool um and yeah so what's gonna happen today is we are just we are gonna grab some pencils <laughs> i have several pencils today because the last uh party we did like this was the wonder woman party and my pencil just broke constantly so i have several pencils on hand just in case <laughs> um they're all hanging out back here we got loads of them all different kinds of pencils and um you know it's fine for you but for me i'm trying to teach you guys and having my pencil break every three seconds is very annoying so i might have to switch up pencils during the process um and just make sure guys if you are painting with me today like i said we're going to draw this guy on here and then we're going to paint it but if you don't have any paints um, or if you don't want to let your kids sit with paints alone which is definitely a thing um, you can grab some colored pencils and do this in colored pencil too. Uh, I think he would actually look really, really great with done in colored pencils or crayons or anything like that. So who else is here? Uh, cool. With Cassett, Maine. Diane is here. And Stephanie and Ben from Massachusetts. That's so sweet. Chantel from Newfoundland. And, uh, oh, cool. That's cool. Daisy, I got gotcha. you. Yep, and for anybody who's asking, even though I'll probably end up repeating this several times during the party, um, this party is staying up forever for free. So you can stick around and watch it on my Facebook page afterwards. And then in the next couple days, I'll get a version of it uploaded to my YouTube channel. And if you don't, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's youtube.com forward slash Julie's Paint Party. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I have tons of free videos there and you can you can get in there, dig in, get some painting done 
and feel awesome because that's what painting does. Painting cures all the things. So that's, and I mean that. It happens to me all the time. So I know I have a very um, naturally positive demeanor. I've always been a positive person, but not all my days are awesome. Some days I have bad days and some days are harder than others. And some days I don't feel good. Some days I have a headache or my stomach hurts or, you know, like humans do. But I'm serious when I say that painting cures it like nothing else. Um, I'll be ready to host a party and feeling kind of poopy. And by that, the end of my party, by the end, uh, as soon as I'm done painting, I feel like a literal million bucks. So if you ever need a cure for your ailments, if you're not feeling good physically, mentally, um, if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling a little bit out of sorts, painting helps so, 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 so much. So if you're here painting with me today, I hope that works for you. And, um, and I, you know, it's just fun. So that helps too. Fun things are awesome. And now that it feels like springtime outside, it seems like everything seems a little bit more fun. So I'm really excited for that. <laughs> Who else is here? Okay. Ooh, hey, Joe, or hi, Joanne from La Range, Saskatchewan. <laughs> La Range. I like that. Um, or if you uh, say it in another accent, La Range. Oh, cool. Ava and Gianna are here from soco what i love southern california you guys are so lucky to live there and gail's from central ohio that's so cool thank you yeah and thanks for the fantastic fathers for sponsoring today what a wonderful thing you know i love being supported and i love supporting amazing people who are doing amazing things so it's really cool to have a partnership with uh such a wicked crew um and we got Ernestine from Alberta and Logan and Ellen are from Waterloo. Gracie and Rosie say hi again. Hey, Tiff and Ray. Hey, guys. Yeah, thanks for your uh, tip last week. That was really, really nice. And I'm just seeing it now. I even thought to myself, I'm like, I got I to gotta text her. Sorry. Um, I love it when you guys show up. Thank you so much for being here. And Nancy's from Iroquois, Ontario. Guys, it's so cool. It's so cool that we get to all be here together. It makes me so happy. So with that said, we're gonna get officially started in two minutes. I'm actually gonna bring my camera and I'm gonna put it close up on my uh, pad of paper so that uh, you guys can see what I'm drawing. So get your pencils ready. Make sure you have a cup of water and a paper plate and a napkin if you are painting with me today or get your colored pencils out so you can color in your leprechaun after and or as we paint over here. Um, and just a few things coming up this week. Uh, there's another free party. So guys, it's kind of bonkers. It's been a year. It's been a year since we've been social distancing during this pandemic. And on Wednesday, it's my one year anniversary of hosting virtual parties. So up until one year ago, I had never done this before. And now it's my main gig. I have do doing parties every day, which is so cool. And um, it's actually, it's crazy how things can change so quickly. Um, but I'm throwing a little party. So Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day. And that was the anniversary of my first party. So uh, we're gonna paint a really, really fun painting together at six o'clock. So it's not too early and it's not too late. We can still have a good time and party, but I'm gonna be doing a ton of giveaways. So I'm gonna be giving away free parties and also a bunch of free t-shirts. And that is going to be sponsored by Houndstooth Printworks. And they're a local company in Windsor here um, that are gonna print out some t-shirts and send them to you if you win but you have to show up live to win these things. So mark it on your calendar. Uh, fun with Julie painting on St. Patrick's Day at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get your green beers, get your green juices, get your green on, and let's uh, have a, it'll be a quick, super fun party and we can celebrate together. And I'm just so grateful that I have this platform to share my love for painting with everybody. So as you can see, I'm very excited. 
I'm very, very excited. <laughs> cool. Lana, uh, Xenia, and Teresa are going to paint, and they're 10 and 9, and that's perfect. So it's 12 o'clock. It's officially time to rock, and um, I just want to welcome everybody. Thank you so much for showing up today. Uh, it's almost St. Patrick's Day, so what a good time to paint a fun little gnomey leprechaun. Um, and before we get started, I just want to give you my regular spiel and just let you guys know that we're just going to take this one step at a time. There is no pressure. Your painting is not going to look like mine. My painting is not going to look like mine. Everybody's is going to be different because everybody's different. And that is why painting is so awesome. We get to express ourselves. We get to explore our capabilities and we get to practice and make them better. And that's exactly what happens when you get through a whole painting. So don't get caught up too much in those little lines and those, you know, the little bits of unevenness. I promise you this guy's going to look so cute by the time you're done with it, even if he's wonky. Honestly, the wonkier the better in my book. I feel like little wonky leprechauns are just the cutest beings that ever existed. So embrace your own wonkiness, embrace the way that you paint, that you draw, and please don't be so hard on yourself. We're here to enjoy our time and get through it together. Um, so get your pencils ready. I'm gonna shift up my camera action here and, um, and we're gonna get this party started. <laughs> All right, one sec. <laughs> Switch view. Let's get this uh, going over here. Oh, sorry, my thing's stuck a little bit. One second. There we go. So graceful. <laughs> my camera action is so graceful. I, I was getting really good at it, but I guess I'm, I need some practice in my camera shifting. <laughs> okay, guys. So we got an eagle eye view on our, cam or on our page here. I'm just using a pad of paper. So I have put some green tape around the edges uh, just to mark off the borders of my picture today. And um, I'm going to get my pencil ready. So I'm going to start with a push pencil. Last time I used this guy, he gave me a lot of trouble and just kept breaking on me. Excuse me, so there's a really good chance I'm going to move over to my regular pencil after. Now what's going to happen is we're going to start right, not right in the middle, just a little bit above center with this guy's big old nose. And it's just a big circle oval shape. So, uh, so let's start there. And at any time, guys, um, I am going to keep my eye on the chat. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm super happy to stop and help and redraw and redo as much as I possibly can. Okay, so step one, oval in the middle. Step two, step three, profit. <laughs> You're like, what are you even talking about? If you know, you know. Okay, so once we have his nose on there, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna start flopping his hat from both sides. So his hat actually goes a little bit below his nose, so I'm gonna start, you know, just about halfway down, and I'm gonna kind of bend over that way, and then I'm also gonna bend over this way with my pencil, not physically. And then I'm going to give him his little brim. So we just got a little, a little floppy floppy on each side there. And then I'm going to attach these two sides here, but they're going to go over top of his nose. So we're going to just leave a little space on the top of his nose there. Boop. I feel like he's a little bigger than my original, but you know, that's fine. That's fine. There we go. Get her done. 
and he's got a big old hat. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a little bit inwards and his hat is gonna kind of pop out and be a little bit bigger on the top. So I'm gonna try and keep it in the frame. Now I have made him extra big. So if you feel like you're not doing it right and it's too small, don't worry about it. Mine is just bonkers big. And now his hat has a little buckle in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and make a square. Um, and you know, it's nice to have a little lean to in the square. So I kind of, my two lines shuffle a little bit inward and they just follow the top of his hat. And then I'm going to follow the same pattern in the center. Give him a little buckle. I got my first pencil break there. Um, and then that buckle is, it's actually going to be a belt around his hat. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, oh, there we go. I'm moving over pencils. This pencil does not work. There we go. <laughs> really giving me trouble. So next step is, it's funny because the way this works is, the line that we're going to make next is actually a part of his beard and a part of his arm. And you're like, what? So um, leave a little space at the brim of his hat. You can come and shuffle in a couple inches, maybe one or one and a half inches over here. And we're going to pull down and we're going to pull around like this. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So shuffle in a little bit, pull down and pull around. So these end up being his little arms, which ends up working out really well because it makes him look like he's like hugging his little beard <laughs> in the most adorable way. And then, so this top part here actually ends up being a little bit of his beard, but if you go down just about halfway before the bend, so take your pencil, bring it down, and hit it up halfway, we are going to pull out another line. And attach it. to that little point there. And he's got a little hand. It's just like a little lump. Aww. <laughs> See, when you're a gnome, you don't even need fingers. <laughs> How sweet is that? Um, and we're kind of going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, he's going to have a little bit more of an elbow on the other side. So I'm going to bring it down maybe about another inch, inch and a half here. And I'm just going to extend this and give him a little bit of an elbow before I pull it over. And he's also going to have a little lumpy hand over here. Oh, and it looks like he's got hugging his little beard. Hi, Anita. Welcome to the party. Uh, Lori, yes, this will be available immediately after. So you can watch it at your leisure. Okay, so once we have his little arms and his little hands on there, we're going to... Um, we're going to finish off his little beard. Actually, it's a very giant beard for the size of him. <laughs> and uh, um, so if you want, you can kind of let your pencil flow. And you're like, oh, OK, if his beard was underneath here, it would end up popping out just under his hand over here. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a little twirly whirl over there. And then same thing here. I'm going to let him his beard kind of cruise down and around. So something like that. 
you know, the and the bottom can be anything. This is actually quite the, cur the curl down here. So you can shape the bottom of his beard however you want. And then the last part is right underneath. He's going to have two boots. And they're just going to be little black boots popping out there. Hey, April and Scout Troop 142 from Corona, California. What's up, girls? Welcome to the party. Who likes to party? We like, we like to party. Um, and last but not least, now this is optional. You can wait until later if you want to put the shamrock in right now, but it's kind of fun to have it there. So um, we're not gonna put the line, we're just gonna find space. So if you just use whatever space you have in this little crevice over here um, to put your shamrock in, make it fit however you can. And a shamrock is actually three hearts put together, which is kind of nice, right? It's kind of, oh, it makes me think of my own family because there's only, there's only three of us. There's me, my husband, Jay, and my daughter, Story. So it's kind of like three hearts together. I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a heart layer. And then there's a little heart that attaches over on this side. And there's a little heart that attaches over on this side. Shh. Now, I'm like I said, I'm not going to make the line to attach it yet. I'm just going to do that with paint later. So take an extra minute. Um, get those lines on there. I'm going to shuffle over some of my paints so that I can get them on my palette. I want to kind of want to have them available over here. So I hope this is going well. Oh, you know what I'm going to do before we actually get painting? I'm going to throw in a few of these beard lines too, just so we have a good map out of where it is. So once the beard's on there, we're just gonna throw in a few lines that we can trace with black afterwards. So we're gonna end up painting right over these. Hopefully they don't get covered up too much so we can remember where they are. So there's one there. We got a line kind of popping out the side of his head there. You can just follow along with me. Some are attached and you can wait to do this after. This doesn't have to happen right now. But if you want to, please go ahead. And a lot of these lines end up kind of getting covered up a little bit too with uh, not only paint, but as we're using the black to, um, to paint over them, you can also manipulate them that way as well. So they're just little lines kind of popping in and out of his beard here. They can wiggle and jiggle and squiggle. Here. And one more. Uh, yeah, one more here. So some might end up a little longer, some might end up a little bit shorter. It's all good. You can put them wherever. All good. And that's our little dude. That's totally our little dude. Um, I am going to leave this here for one second. Um, and finish it up, my friends. And please uh, throw me some thumbs ups when you are ready to uh, start painting. Uh, get your palette together. I got my little paper plate working here, working hard yet. Well, not yet, but it will be. Twill be. And um, we are going to start with a little bit of light green and white in the background and work our way forward. So we're going to paint the whole background first and then we are going to paint our little Nomi later. All right, I'm starting to see some thumbs ups. Perfect. April's good. 
Sarah, art saves. Art saves. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, oh no, frowny face. <laughs> Take your time, friends. It's okay. Amy's good. <laughs> oh, hey, Noah. Thanks, Anita. That's really nice. I'm so happy you like the paint parties. I like how. Cool. We're in New York. Way to go. Deborah's ready. Zang. I'm seeing a few little good little thumbs up in here. Okay, so I'm just going to give you one more minute. Susan, thumbs up. Oh, wait, there we go. <laughs> Good stuff, Laura, Wendy. All right, cool, guys. All right, well, I'm going to switch my camera view one more time and uh, so that we can get a better perspective of our... So we can see both guys at the same time. It's kind of nice. Okay, let's do it. Don't mind my, my wiggly jiggliness. Wiggle and jiggle and wiggle and jiggle and wiggle and jiggle. Let's see if I can, oh, there we go. There we are. All right, we got our perspective in play. I got my cup of water here. I got my paper plate to put my paints on and I am going to paint my whole background. Where, where are my brushes? There's three brushes that I like to use for most of my parties. So let me just, oh, I just want it to be even so badly, but it's not, oh, maybe if I pull it out a little bit this way. Okay. So, um, I have three brushes that I use for most of my parties. If you haven't um, you know, picked up any proper brushes. I just get my brushes from the dollar store, um, but you can get them at a lot of different stores. They are just synthetic nylon brushes. Um, I have my Fatty McFatterson three quarter inch flat brush. I have my medium half inch flat brush. It's the sister brush to my Fatty McFatterson here. And I always use some sort of liner brush. So something that looks like this, I don't actually use this one. Um, but uh, something like this type of brush works really well for your outlines and stuff. So go ahead, get your brushes ready. And like I said, I always have a paper towel so I can wipe my brushes on when I'm done. And the first two colors that we're going to use today, I have this lime green color. So it's, it's called leaf green. Um, if you don't have a leaf green, you could take just regular green. You can mix in a little white and maybe even a little bit of yellow with it to make it more limey colored. Um, or maybe you don't even want to use green. That's fine too. Maybe you want to use pff, blue or maybe yellow would be a good color too. Um, I would suggest not use, actually even red would work, but it is a St. Patrick's Day painting. So I'm going to stick to green today. And what I'm going to do is take my big fat brush and I'm just going to start to color in all around my leprechaun. So often I'll just give my brush a little dip in my cup, a little tap inside my paint so that it helps my brush smoothly go across the canvas. And I'm also going to alternate little bits of white in there too, just to get a little bit of streaky action. Now what my intention is is to make all of my brush strokes going in an up and down fashion um, which might be a little bit challenging so if that seems unrealistic just just get in there and paint around those edges and it's all good but one thing i like to do is i will like follow around my edges of my painting and then swipe them in another, in like one swell, one swell motion. Something that I like to do. Um, and if you go inside the lines, no worries. Uh, we are outlining this whole bad boy in black after. So there's a lot of room for leeway. You don't have to worry about um, 
messing up by get it going inside your lines or anything like that. It's all good. So get in there, swoop it up. Every once in a while, grab a little bit of white and swoop it in there with it so it's got a little texture. And, um, and just, yeah, don't be afraid to give it a little scribble here and there. A little scribbling never hurt nobody. And let's be honest, scribbling feels good, right? Ooh, Lana's using an apple tart for green. Interesting. I like that. This is a very, uh, the, yeah, the green I'm using is very green apple-y. You know what? I wish it was called that now. Thanks. <laughs> I, I like the idea of my, my green being called apple tart. I'm a big fan. I love green apples. Um, now with the shamrock, I'm just going to paint right over that because that's going to end up being green later anyways. And anytime I'm trying to make my lines all go up and down, often I'll just start on the line and swoop away from it. So I know that I'm staying outside of the lines. That's just a little tip I have. You can do it any way you want. But often, you know, when we start on the line and swoop away, then we can keep it all in the right area. And I just keep laying it on there just filling it in ooh <laughs> I like that Amy said that uh, Maddie is using lime sorbet yes talk to my my family about that they're big sorbet lovers me I like sorbet it's nice it's a nice tasty treat but if I'm gonna go to the ice cream store I'm getting myself a big old chocolate ice cream cone. That's all that I want. Chocolate. Chocolate. Maybe double chocolate. <laughs> Maybe chocolate with chocolate swirls in it. That's what I'm all about. But um, my, yeah, we have a lot of dairy-free people in my family. So uh, we, we hit up the sorbet. Or there's some really delicious uh, coconut milk yogurts as well that are so good. Anyways, I don't know why I'm talking about ice cream right now. It's still definitely not warm enough to dream about ice cream, even though it is. it feels so good to see the sun. Yay! I hope it's this nice on St. Patrick's Day. How fun will it be to party in the sunshine and enjoy just being outside? <laughs> Oh, dreams, dreaming, I'm just dreaming, dreaming of the day I can be with my friends again, dreaming, dreaming. <laughs> hey, Candace from Windsor, stoked to have you here, way to make it to the pate. Hey, 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 we got a party. So, you know, I'm just going to go back around one more time. So once my whole uh, background is filled up, I can always just go and take a little bit of extra paint and kind of swoop in a few spots to make it look a little extra solid. And once I'm generally happy with that, I'm going to give my brush a rinse. <laughs> Deb had ice cream for breakfast. That's awesome. <laughs> you know what I love for breakfast? pie <laughs> there's something about eating pie for breakfast that i'm all about so ice cream for breakfast is awesome <laughs> you guys are so sweet <laughs> okay so give me those thumbs ups i love seeing the hearts and the thumbs ups let me know when you're done your background guys keep me posted keep me in the loop loop it up Loop it up, Chris. I'm about to loop it up, Chris. That's what I'm supposed to do. Um, and while we're looping it up, why did I even say that? I don't even remember why I said that. Um, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this pine green. So if you have never painted with me before, just know that I get these fancy, fancy, fancy 
Um, these ones in particular are from the Dollar Tree, but Dollarama also has some super simple acrylic paints that are perfect, absolutely perfect for these paint parties that we do. Um, you don't need expensive materials to make a really sweet painting. And I am also going to put a little bit of yellow. Oh, did I forget? I forgot my yellow. I need some yellow. Don't mind my face. <laughs> and a little yellow acrylic. Just a little. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of some yellow for me. Ding -ding, ding -ding. All right. So there, I'm going to clean up my brush. You can see I'm just pushing it on the bottom, getting all of that paint out of there. I'm going to give my brush a good wipe on my napkin, get all those paints out. And we're going to start fresh, and we're going to get the green on here. So, so we're going to put green up in his hat, around the brim of his hat, and inside of his arms. And I'm just going to use this dark green, um, and I'm going to start to swoop it back and forth. I uh, really like following the actual shape of his hat. So I'll take my time so that my brush cruises up and over. And over and I just bring it back and forth I'm using my big brush still and guys at any time if you feel like you don't like whatever brush I'm using isn't working for you it's totally okay to go ahead and grab yourself a different size brush um, if you need something a little smaller to get in those crevices with all good um, but I am gonna go up and around his buckle because that is going to be yellow and yellow is, it doesn't cover up very well. So make sure you leave a little space, even though I did get inside the lines a little bit. What are you gonna do? So <laughs> nothing. Um, so I'm just taking my time. Now, if you do get some green in the belt part, that's fine because we're just covering right up with black. No worries in that department. Now at the top of his hat, I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm going to swoosh in a little bit of yellow in the top of his hat here. I'm just going to go ahead and take a little corner of yellow and I'm going to bring it back and forth down the center of his hat and just let some of it kind of mix in a little bit. And I just want like a little yellow sheen right in the center there. Now, the more I go back and forth, the more the colors come together. So you end up losing a lot of the yellow, but it is nice to have that little bit of a lighter area there up at the top. And then I'm going to move to the brim. So this painting doesn't have a whole lot of techniques like that. The, the, those things can be kind of advanced. So if you're not feeling like adding the yellow in, swooshing it in and up at the top. Um, it's not going to make or break your painting at all. So don't worry about it. If it doesn't end up showing up, it's all good. But yeah, just one step at a time. I'm going to keep filling all the areas. And just know that sometimes our paints, uh, they can be a little bit transparent. If they don't go on super well the first time, don't fret. Just let it dry and you can give it a quick second coat afterwards. So if it looks a little blotchy, um, it's all good. Don't concern too much about it. But I do want to cover up whatever little white spots there are. So I'm trying to strategically get around his nose. Make sure that all the little empty areas are all nice and filled in. There we go. My lights are really shining up my painting here. Really shiny. Um, and then I'm going to do the same in his arms. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some green. So what 
I'm, I colored in his hat and the brim of his hat and I'm like, it doesn't look incredible. There's still a lot of streakies. I can see a lot of brush stroke marks, but if I want it to look nice and solid, I'm going to have to let it sit there for a minute and just let it dry so that I can give it another coat after. Um, and it's really going to depend on the surface you're using and, um, and you know, how much patience you have <laughs> and how, uh, how you want your leprechaun to look in the end. So if, um, if you really want it to look super solid, just let it dry and then you can give it another coat just in a few minutes or you can wait and do it after. You know when I start concentrating a lot, when I start, when I stop talking. Concentration is a game. Are you ready? Let's begin. Name a fruit. Any fruit. You guys remember that game? Am I dating myself? I mean, as in date and time, not, I am not dating myself. <laughs> Oh man. So just arms and hat. And our shamrock is also a dark green. So get in there. Oh, hi, Sophia. I haven't been painting for a while. I've been really busy, but I will rewatch this amazing uh yeah you know the only thing that gets us painting is our own ambition and i was saying this at my party last night you know um i've been painting for a really really long time uh professionally for like 15 years now um but i had to go through a big transition phase you know like you don't, you don't need a big space to paint. I, uh, I painted in the corner of my bedroom for a really long time. You know, you just need a little easel or a little table with your paint set up. And, uh, but the one thing I did learn, if you love painting and you want to get, become a better painter and you want to do it on the regular, it's really important to find a space, um, that you can leave your paints ready to go. So I find, you know, if you're only painting on the weekends and you only, like, you only bring your supplies out every once in a while, then it's really hard to make it a habit. But um, as soon as I realized that if I didn't see my paints, I wasn't painting. And if I did see my paints, I was painting. <laughs> that's when I realized I, I just, I had to find a spot that, you know, it didn't, doesn't have to take up a lot of space, but it has to be readily available so that, um, so that it's always there that you can pick it up anytime, anytime, like, and even, you know, five minutes of painting can be better than anything. You don't need to, you know, to sit down for a three hour session every single time. Um, but you, if you have your paints there ready to go, you can just sit down and paint whenever your little heart desires. So if you only have a bedroom space, if you're, you know, a um, college student or if you're, you know, just if you have roommates or if you're just a kid and um, you have your own, if you have your own bedroom, make a little space so that you always have a little getaway and you can always pull my parties up on YouTube and follow along um, or, or get real creative and start making your own style and your own paintings because that's, that's where the magic's at. Oh, I got static. Boo to static ooze. It's probably because I talk too much. Sorry, guys, if my, my mic goes out a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do, I have painted all of my elements green. I have my hat green, I have my arms green, and I have my shamrock green. And to make this, um, 
look way better, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a really quick once over. Now, when I mean quick, I mean quick. So this time around, the next time you put your paint on there, everything's gonna look way more solid and you're not gonna have to give it as much attention. Um, just get in there and just fill it in and it's gonna, it's gonna make it look way better. Now, if I end up going ahead and you don't get to the second coat before we start the next round, uh, the next steps, don't worry about it. You can always add another coat of green after we're done here. So it's all good. But this will give everybody an opportunity to catch up and, and get all of those little crevices, all those tiny little crevices. And you know, everything, I, I always make you guys wait till last to do the black outlines um, because it just makes so much more sense to do it that way. So, you know, our paintings always look pretty wonky until we get um, that last, that last little bit of paint on there and get those nice black outlines on all of our objects. That's when, that's when it all comes together really, really good. Um, and before we get to that point, anybody who feels uncomfortable uh, painting black outlines you can always do it with marker even though it's kind of cheating but that's okay if you want to uh, outline your guy in Sharpie um, that is totally a way to do it too you just have to be patient and you got to wait it out you got to wait till he's dry until you until you outline it after And you can see the second round of painting goes a lot faster um, because, you know, the paint gets dry and it actually allows the paint to rest easier. Um, it doesn't, it actually, it holds the paint a lot better that second round when it, you're going straight on the canvas or straight on the paper, it doesn't hold it as well. So, um, so it's always a little easier the second round. Plus we got, we already had some practice, so. Now this shamrock might be a little hard to do with your big brush. So if you feel like you need to go and grab a smaller brush to do this part too, go for it. Just do it. Do it, do it, do it. Ta -da! He's so cute. Do, 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 do. All right. Now I am just giving my brush a really, really good rinse here. Rinse, 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 rinse. And since I have a little bit of yellow on my palette already, I'm going to go ahead and um, and fill in his buckle. So. I'm not going to worry about going around all these edges. I'm just going to fill in the whole square yellow. And this is probably going to do well with a second coat of paint as well. So um, it depends. It depends on how it goes on. Now I'm going to fill in this whole area with yellow. And you know, you really don't have to worry about going outside the lines for this one because we are outlining this whole area in black after. So just get that covered up. I got this whole buckle area all covered up. I have out, gone outside of all the edges and um, yeah, and now I can just let that dry and we wait. We wait to put on, we're going to have to add in his big black belts on there. It's all good. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> You're the funnest. All right, um, so what's next? All right, we have the hat on, we have the arms on. Um, I guess we gotta put this beard on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of orange and a little bit of red on my plate. Some 
orange on there. And I got a little red. Just a little bit of each, a little orange, a little red right there on my plate. I just always find a spot. There's always a spot to put it. So it's all good. Make sure my all that green's rinsed out of my cup or out of my brush, sorry. Not my cup, my water in my cup is very, very green right now. Um, it's very nice color green, I like it. And really, I like to squeeze out any of that excess. Uh, a lot of paint usually gets stuck in this bottom ridge of my paintbrush, so I really try and wiggle that stuff out of there. Um, and we're gonna start putting this beard on here, and it's mostly orange, obviously, <laughs> right? Uh, but we're going to use a little mixture of orange and red, so it's going to have a, a few different little orangey and red tones in there, and the two colors go really, really well together, so it's all good. Um, and it's just a matter of following your heart with this one. So, oh, Carol, good. Carol likes it. I like it a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and grab orange to start, and I'm just going to start filling in his beard. So I get a little scribbly, you know, you can follow along the edges. And then every once in a while, I take a little corner of red and I'm gonna swoosh that in there too. And I'm gonna mix the two together. Now, it ends up looking more orange because the orange is actually, a, a, has a little bit more pigment in it than the red. So you'll get different vari what look like different variations of orange inside of his beard. There'll be a couple little darker areas when the red starts to mix in. And I'm going in and around his nose. So like I said before, whenever I'm going around an object, I take a little paint and I start on the line and move away from the line on the line, move away from the line. And that uh, helps me just stay away from getting too much paint in the spots that are gonna be a different color. And again, you know, if you need a little help getting into those little crevice areas, just go ahead and grab, um, grab a smaller brush to get in there. And we already put our wiggly lines in there from before. So um, you can follow the, sh the, the wave of the lines with your paintbrush. And you'll find that that's going to really lend well, especially when you start to mix in the red. It's going to follow the same kind of pattern. Um, and it's going to make it look like he's got a nice wispy beard. Now down at the bottom here, because, because his boot is gonna be totally black, I'm not gonna care about staying in the lines too much. I'm just gonna go right over top because I know. And the cool thing about drawing on our character first is that the paints don't generally cover up the pencil. So it gives us an opportunity to paint over top of it without losing the line so we can, we can see still, uh, which is kind of nice. Now, if you, are insecure and you don't, uh, you know, it's nice to have it drawn on first, but if you don't want to see those lines on there first, um, it's also okay to just paint them on after. You don't have to draw any of this on first. You can just do it shape by shape, but you know, it's nice. It's nice to have an idea of where your paint is going to go. And at any time, if your brush is getting a little leggy or a little draggy, just grab a tiny dip of water and pat it on your plate so that your brush starts to glide a little bit nicer along the canvas. And yeah, it does get a little tricky in these little crevicey areas with the big brush, so feel free to grab that smaller brush up if you have to. Grab it up, buttercups. All right. 
cruising. Cruise. Um, and so what I'm going to do now, my whole beard is filled up. And I just want to get a few little extra ready strokes in there. So take your brush, once the whole beard is full, just take your brush and kind of move it along so that you know that all of those brush strokes are all going in the nice same direction. If you have to add a little bit of extra paint or a little tiny little dab of water in there, go ahead and really try and, and move your brush along with the lines that we made before. And then it'll look like he's got a nice flowy beard. Flowing in the wind. I have to say this beard is quite magnificent. Could you imagine having a beard so big that it just like engulfed your body? And you wouldn't even need a blanket at night. You would just like lay amongst your beard. That'd be sweet. There's probably some wilderness men out there. I don't know how many ladies have beards like this, but I'm sure that could be a possibility as well. Anything's possible, friends. Anything is possible. <laughs> okay, let me know how it's going. How's everybody doing? Are you enjoying the process? Are you getting it done? Are you feeling good? I want all positive remarks. <laughs> no negative remarks at all. Please and thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I guess you could, but you know, positive is just way better. And don't forget, guys, you know, um, oh, Facebook won't let you buy stars. What? <laughs> Enjoying the process. Yay. Susan's always awesome showing up. I love it. We're doing good and we're enjoying the process. Perfect. I could not put yellow on. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, good, guys. Thanks for the amazing feedback. You are the best ever. Looks neat. I like it. <laughs> Thanks. I can dig it. Yeah, don't worry about the yellow. It's all good. Um, we are going to uh, do a few little yellow highlights afterwards. So, you know, if the yellow isn't sticking to the brim of his hat up here, meh. We'll just throw a little bit on later. It's all good. But we are going to continue to move forward. So what's going to happen now? He's got this pink, pink nose and little pink hands. And we are going to make some pink. We're going to mix a little bit of red in with our white and, um, and get that all in there. I am finally going to grab my smaller brush to get into these areas. So I have my medium flat brush here. It's a half inch flathead brush. That's just really full of paint. Yuck. And I'm going to take my palette and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a little bit of pink. Now, pink is mostly white with a little bit of red. And you get to decide what varying color of pink you think his nose should be. I'm going to go for a light pink. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab a nice scoop of white and put it over here by my red. We don't need a lot. We're just going to make a little bit. So I took a little extra and I'm just going to take one tiny Come on, focus, focus, here we go. One tiny little corner of red at a time and mix it in with my white here. That little tiny corner of white or of red makes a pretty decent pink. So light, actually looks pretty white. Maybe, maybe just a little, just 
maybe two little dabs, but you get to decide what level of pink you want his nose and hands to be. Now I'm gonna make a light pink and I am gonna add a little bit of darker pink along the edges. That is an advanced move, so you don't have to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm just making this really nice light pink and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill in his nose. Fill it all around. Years ago, I used to be a musician. And uh, it was only, I think, three St. Patrick's Day ago where I was still actually playing music and getting paid to sing and play guitar at uh, my favorite bar in Windsor, Rock Bottom Bar and Grill, and my second favorite bar, the Dominion House Tavern. Um, I used to play lots of music down in that area of Windsor, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, I haven't practiced in a while, but I feel I, I'm kind of being called to do a little mini set for our St. Patty's Day party on Wednesday. We'll see. I'm not promising anything because I haven't practiced in so very, very long. But I feel like it would be really fun to whip out the guitar and sing a couple tunes with you guys. Um, classic rock, of course, is, is all I'm going to play. But, uh, but yeah, it's always fun to, to have a few little sing-alongs going on. Now, um, his... It's, it almost looks white, but it's actually pink, depending on what your camera looks like. Uh, this is a very light pink. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I'm going to take just the tiniest little bit of red and mix it in there. And I'm going to take that little bit of red and I'm just going to swoop just underneath of his nose here so there's a little bit of variation. And I'm going to go back and forth a few times so he's got just a little bit of a darker pink on the bottom of his nose. So whatever pink you use, just grab a little tiny extra little bit of red and mix it in there. And you can swoop it under his nose and it gives him this really subtle, but it's nice little shadow right underneath there. And the more times I swoop back and forth or pull one way, the more the colors come together and it gets a nice little black. And I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and use some of that pink just inside of his hands here too. Scribble it in. Um, adding a little drop of water definitely helps me get uh, nice smooth lines around the edges of his hands and nose. So if you need to give, uh, give your brush a little dip in the water and dip. So anytime I dip my brush in my cup of water, I always tap it in the paint that I'm going to be using. I never go directly from water to canvas because then it drips and it can... Um, it can kind of peel off some of the paint. So it's always cup, then plate, then canvas. Never cup, then canvas. Unless, of course, you want drippies. Now, that's a totally different ball game, but we're going to keep it chill today. Ooh, I like, I like coral. Coral's nice. I like that. Pearl's a good color. All right, guys, and that's it. So we have all of our main elements on here, and um, we can go in now and get all of the black parts on here. Excuse me. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna trace all around his hat. I'm gonna fill in his, his little belt here, his nose, the hair, the hands, the feet, 
uh, the shamrock, all of that stuff is going to be uh, covered in black paint and uh, or outlined in black paint, I should say, not covered. Um, and I'm going to do most of it with my medium flat brush. So something I like to do, I will grab my brush and I just, I like to make sure that it can stay nice and flat. So I have my medium flat brush here. It's still a little damp from the water that I just rinsed it in. And I can take my fingers and I can smoosh the bristles together. So if you can do that with your brush that's a little bit bigger than, than a liner brush, this is a really great way to outline this guy. Because the outline doesn't have to be super thin. It can have a, a little bit of girth to it. It doesn't have to be like really, really thin particular lines. So when you're ready, get that black on your palette. Um, there's always space. I used up all of the lime green, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on there. And whenever I do any kind of outlines, um, I always like to continue just to add a tiny drop of water in with my paint while I go for that same reason that I keep repeating that it just, it helps fill in any little canvas holes. It keep my, keeps my brush uh, not dry. So sometimes, you know, when you put straight paint, it dries up quite a bit. So it's nice to have that really smooth line going around and just adding water right into the side of my paint here. And that's what's going to help me get a nice smooth line. And I will take my brush and I pull it back and forth to make sure that it stays nice and flat, flattened out. And I'm going to work my way around the edges. So starting here, I'm going to and I just keep going until it doesn't let me go anymore. And having that little bit of water on there really helps that process. And like I said before, guys, if you are uncomfortable outlining with paint, I fully understand. Uh, but just make sure if you decide to do it with marker, you just got to make sure you um, you wait till all of your paint is dry. Don't don't try and do it with uh, with your paint still being wet because that can get tricky. Tricky. Chick, 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 chicky. Now, <laughs> it's always a little challenging for me because when I paint this guy on my own, I'm often like right in front of it. So outlines are a little bit easier for me when I'm not over on the side like this, even though it is possible. But they're a little, my lines are a little wonky when I'm painting from the side like this. So just do the best you can. And, you know, if you are painting at home and you're just on the table or something like that, you can, you totally have the freedom to turn your canvas around so that uh, the direction of your paintbrush is always feels comfortable and always works for you. So, you know, if you're right handed, it's generally easier to go from the left to the right like this than it is to go from the right to the left. And that's just because, you know, that's how we're, we practice writing and all that stuff. Um, it really helps going in the direction that your hand is the most comfortable with. So just take your time and get around those edges. And I'm going to outline a few things and I'm just going to um, post a couple links in our chat here. So as far as upcoming parties are concerned, I really, really, really want you guys to hang out with me on St. Patty's Day. I really want to celebrate my one year virtual anniversary with you guys. And if you decide to show up live, um, you have a really good opportunity to win uh, free paint parties. Um, 
and I'm going to be giving away t-shirts and they're going to get sh shipped straight to your door. And this is the painting that we're doing on St. Patty's Day. It's called We Built This City. We built this city. We built this city on rock and roll. Um, and it's really fun. It's, you know, really colorful and really drippy. And I feel like it's just going to be really, really fun to paint this with you guys. So make sure you get those paints together and come join me on, on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. And we're going to be celebrating my one-year virtual anniversary, which is so, so good. I can't even believe it. I'm just over the moon. Um, and to let you know, uh, because... Wait, where are we going here? I don't actually have this event. Just look it up under my events page <laughs> in uh, on my Julie's Paint Party page here. But when you guys are done your painting, make sure you post them in my public group. Don't mind my reaching here for a second. I'm just going to get in here. So, uh, yeah, make sure you go join my public paint party group and uh, post your paintings so we can um, rant and rave about all of those. And you can obviously see all of my events coming up. Here. And in the spirit of... Um, of this just being a party that we're doing with our kids and maybe you have small kids. I actually wrote and illustrated a book a few years ago. So if that's something that you're interested in, here's a few links here. I just threw them all in there. There is my Project Monsters Alphabet Adventure book. Um, there is my Curious Creatures coloring book. And they, uh, you can actually download the coloring book for free. And that link is in there as well. So. Um, if you go on my website, you can, um, I think it's juliespaintparty.com forward slash free coloring book or just coloring book. Yeah. Forward slash coloring book. And, um, you can download all the coloring pages. If you have a printer at home, you can just print them out or you can order it on Amazon for literally co the cost that it cost me. Um, I don't make any money off of it. So, uh, they're just a bunch of creatures that I've been painting and kind of creating over the years that you can let your kids color. And that's kind of fun. I love coloring. Coloring is another wonderful escape when you can't paint. So go ahead and grab those there. But especially, I really want you guys to hang out with me on my anniversary day. So if you can hang out on Wednesday, please do. And I'm just taking my time. I'm going to go around all the edges. Now his boots are totally black, so you can get in there and just color them all black. We built this city on rock and roll. Marcoli plays the mamba. Listen to the radio, don't you remember? We built this city. We built this city on rock and roll. We built this city. Boo -woo. I love that song. <laughs> oh. My curly plays mamba. Um, but that's the thing. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot of Irish tunes. So, um, if I do decide to whip out my guitar on St. Patty's day, it's definitely not going to be Irish jigging. It's going to be very, um, just old regular songs. Hey, 
Yay, you're all done. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Lynn, I can't wait to see your butterfly. Yeah, guys, I've been so crazy busy. It's been really hard for me to keep up with my, uh, with my social media posts. But please know uh, that I appreciate you posting in the group so, so much. If for some reason I missed uh, your painting, I sincerely apologize because it fills my heart with so much joy when I get to see everybody's paintings. Um, it really is. It, it, it's so awesome. So please don't hesitate to uh, get in there and show off your stuff. Get in there, show it off. It's like the one time where it's okay to be a show off. Well, not the one time. I'm sure there's lots of times that it's okay. But it is one of the times that it's okay to be a show off. <laughs> so just keep, you know, I'm just following along all the lines that we made. It's so nice that they're right there for me to just follow along to. I don't have to worry about where they go, what's happening. They just, they're ready to trace. And once all your black lines are on there, so I know some people are probably cruising along here faster than I can even keep up. That's been happening lately. People are finishing long before I'm done, which is crazy. Um, uh, yeah, it's nice after all the black lines are on here, take a little yellow paint and cruise around some of the edges. So uh, like the brim of his hat can have some yellow on it. The brims of his arms have a little yellow and his hat up here. Um, also a few little spots in his beard have a few little, uh, few little yellow <laughs> highlights. And yeah, sorry, Sue, no Dropkick Murphys in my repertoire as much as I would love that. <laughs> they are not in there. And I'm also going to do the shamrock up here. And this guy's cool. I like how he's got nice, a nice thick exterior. To keep it chill and nice and thick lined. Um, and then, yeah, we have to attach this shamrock to his hand so he looks like he's holding his, it's not just floating in the air, even though that, that would be cool too. If it was just floating, it would totally work. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just, um, always like to just add a little extra drop of water for when I'm making any kind of longer lines and I'm going to try my best to attach. There we go. Nice long line in there. <laughs> and, uh, all right. Now I am going to go grab my, my liner brush because there are a few little spots that are definitely difficult for me to enter. So I have this little crevice down here that needs a little wispiness that I can't reach with my regular paintbrush. Oh no, it's dripping. No, don't drip. And oh no. So for instance, I had a little drippiness. I just moved the water around a little bit. And even if it took away um, from my uh, actual outline, um, it's all good. I can just simply just take a little orange and go back 
over that later. It's it's not it's not a make or break. If something gets covered up by the black, you can always add a little bit of paint over top of it. It's all good. My coley plays the mamba. Listen to radio. Don't you remember? We built this city. We built this city on rock and roll. All right. So I have all of my main spots done here. He's thick. He's cute. I love him. Thick and cute and love him. And um, let's see here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my highlighted brush or my liner brush. So I got my liner brush in action here. Whoop. And I'm going to take a little yellow and like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to pop around my guy. So I'm going to take that little bit of yellow and uh, go ahead and put a little outline on his cap up here. Need a little water in that action. So same as ever, I'm just going to add a little water into my paints. And cruise along some of these edges here along his arm. It's so nice to have the little highlights going on. Just brings them together. And there's some in his beard. Doesn't have to be on all the hair, just on a few different hairs. Works perfectly. And then on the brim of his hat. And if you want, you can give his little, a little highlight in his shoe too, if you wanted to. And, um, and last but not least, what's kind of nice to do, uh, you can do the same thing with white. So if you wanted to put a little bit of highlight in his hands, you could do that. You could, oh, Actually, that's a really fun thing to do. So if you take a little bit of white, you can give him a little um, a little swoop on the top of his nose so that it has he has a little highlight on the top of his nose and a little oh. <laughs> my dog's barking. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's there barking. <laughs> And um, last but not least, you can take a tiny little bit of, of the dark green, really, really light. It doesn't have to be very dark at all. You can actually add a little bit of water in with it and give him a little swooshy on the bottom down here so that it looks like he is actually standing on something. So just scribble in a little bit of the darker paint underneath his boots. And if you get it inside the black, that's okay. Uh, you can always take a little bit of black and cover it up if it takes if it takes over a little bit too much, but having a little bit of shadow going on underneath of his body, that just helps us give him a little dimension. Actually, he's not just floating in the ether, you know, he's actually got a little place to stand there. And I can't leave this painting if my shamrock doesn't have highlights as well. So think of your shamrock like a balloon. All of these little crevices, oh my goodness, I'm, I have a lot of drippies today. Um, your shamrock can have little highlights on all the little heart shapes there. So it looks like a little shamrock balloon. It's so cute. So cute. Man. And dripping all over the place. So from this point, guys, you know, you take your time, make sure... Um, it's all good. You don't have to rush through it. Uh, we are just, um, let's see here. There you go. Yeah. Just doing those little finishing touches might take a little bit longer than you want to. <laughs> oh, oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> 
Ernestine says, my four-year-old daughter just stops playing and comes running to listen to you every time you sing. Aw, <laughs> that's so cute. I love it. Hi, Ernestine. Um, and I'm going to pop back in here. Let me get in here so I can say uh, my goodbyes. All right. Hey, friends. All right, here we go. Now that you have this really sweet leprechaun, and I'm just going to try and get my camera here. Um, now that you have this really rad leprechaun, you can um, put him on your wall for good luck. And you can name him. That'd be really good. So if you uh, post him in the Julie's Paint Party public group or on my page somewhere, give him a name. What's this guy's name? I know Lucky seems like the obvious choice, but I feel like you should be a little bit more creative than that. So try something other than Lucky. And, um, oh, bye Lana, thank you for showing up today. And, um, and then the last thing you gotta do here, guys, is just put your little signature down in the bottom corner, make sure everybody knows that you are the one who made this painting. Um, and way to go, if you made it all the way through, Sibo Mizami, way to, way to make it all the way through the painting. Sometimes that can be hard. Um, I can't wait to see your cute little dudes. And I really, 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 really hope that you join me on Wednesday night for St. Patrick's Day to celebrate my one year virtual anniversary. Um, just if you show up live, you have a really good chance of winning some stuff. And that's it. So I just want to give another shout out to the Fantastic Fathers. Thank you so much for sponsoring this party today. Um, guys, check them out. It's fantasticfathers.ca. Um, you know, if you're having any issues with your family and stuff, they are there to support you. Um, and make sure that your kids have all of the right influences in their life. Um, it's so important to have our mom and dad with us, um, if possible. And... And yeah, I just, it makes my heart feel super full. So just thank you guys again. Uh, I really appreciate you showing up here on this really, really beautiful Saturday. All right. Now go finish those paintings and go post them in the group and move on with your lucky, lucky day. Okay. I'll see you in the, I'll see you later. Bye guys.